the specific uses in the LI limited industrial? Could, could everybody hear me? Yes. yes. Okay. In the uh, LI limited industrial and OLI office limited industrial zoning district. But first, I thought it would be helpful to everyone to give a short presentation about zoning. It, it used to be that we used to give a little uh, class every year. Remember that, Alan, about some subject? So, so I thought uh, today might be a, a good day to uh, give another little class and talk about these uses in these districts. So I have a few slides that will discuss what zoning is, talk about the zoning map, what a development standard is, and then we can talk specifically about the LI and OLI zoning district. Um, so tonight I thought we would just begin the discussion and then at the end I want to hear from uh, the you, the Planning Commission members, about what uses you want to see in the two districts and then I'll go back and do some research and then the next time we meet we can expand on the uses and development standards. So zoning is the law of a municipality that determines how a land or property can be used. It regulates the activities or uses that can take place on a property. It regulates the size of buildings that can, that can be built on a property. Um, the size of the building is also known as the bulk or dimensional criteria. If you follow along on some of my review letters, you'll hear me use that term bulk or dimensional criteria. It also prom promotes orderly patterns to support the public good. Does anyone know where the first comprehensive zoning ordinance in the United States was adopted? I do. <gasps> you do? And I know why you might know, but go ahead, Mary. <laughs> I shared the PowerPoint with you. It oh, well, that's no fair. Somebody else, somebody else answer. Anybody else know? I'll guess Philadelphia. Uh, that's a good guess, but it was in New York City in 1916. So the pictures on the slide show examples of activities that would be classified as a commercial use. And this area should look familiar to all of us at Sycamore Street. Green Parrot's here, Joel's Pizza is down here. Um, and what a residential use might look at, might look like, uh, you get an extra point if you know what street in Newtown Township this, this slide represents. Um, Sequoia. <gasps> Amber, that's awesome. That's great. Good job. That is Sequoia Street. And then I okay, all the time. Double points if you know where in Newtown Township this industrial use is. No idea. I see everybody getting town? closer. Well, don't hurt yourself. It's not a new town township. It's just to throw you off. It's just a you. It's just a picture of an industrial use. It's a, a recycling facility. So zone, zoning determines um, what uses can what uses can occur, and it's uh, to ensure land uses are compatible with each other and that they don't create conflicts. So our zoning map, every location or property in a municipality is given a zoning designation on the zoning map. All of these rectangles and shapes represent property, somebody's property, all these rectangle, rectangles. Every location or property has a zoning designation on a zoning map. So of course, this is a picture of the Newtown Joint Municipal Zoning Map it shows that the area of the township. This is Stoopville Road up here. Durham Road is down here. Here's Swamp Road along the edge and Washington Crossing Road. The area in green is our conservation management district that allows single family developments on large lots, three acre lots minimum. You could go down to one acre if you have two acres of open space as we all know. The area in red down at the bottom is our planned commercial district that allows a mix of retail stores, offices, and restaurants. And then the yellow areas are the medium density zoning district. 
which allows residential buildings such as, and it can allow um, residential buildings like townhouses and garden apartments as part of a performance subdivision. So if you own the property inside a yellow area on this map, let's say like one of these lots over here, um, you would be in the R1 medium density residential district. The map must address conditions everywhere in the jointer, everywhere. And it includes more than, anybody have a guess how many different zoning designations are in the jointer? 25. Oh, that's a good guess. Who guessed that, Joel? Warren? Warren? Very good, Warren. It's 27, 27 different zoning designations. So the zoning code is contained in the Joint Municipal Zoning Ordinance. The regulations limit the use and sizes of new buildings, among other things. This is an example of some of the regulations that can be found in the ordinance and that we can regulate, always keep it in the back of your mind because we're, we're doing all of this to look at the uses in the LI and OLI dis district. So these are some of the things that can be regulated. Building height, the height limit can be found in every single zoning district classification. The zoning code also contains required setbacks. So it's how far from a property line, if this black line is the property line, how far back from that property line that this building can be. <sighs> it's something that we discussed recently, which we might remember and fits in with setbacks is uh, uh, of course, uh, a use that created a lot of noise. If a use that creates a lot of noise, such as animals or machinery or something like that, then we would and should probably require a larger setback from the property line than you might expect for a residential building. And the zoning code determines how much parking is required to be built with any new building and where that parking is located. Um, our um, zoning district, the LI district, does not allow parking within the front yard only with it or only within certain uh, situations. Me, what we might want to look into that when we discuss the LI and OLI districts. Development standards. The zoning ordinance also contains many detailed standards development or performance standards. And it's all intended to support the municipality, the municipality or Newtown Township's policy goals. These include standards for good design. So new buildings are built that are compatible with existing neighborhoods. This should look familiar to everybody. This is the promenade on Sycamore Street. And those of you that were on the commission at that time might remember we had a lot of discussion about what this building should look like, yes, but how high this building should be because we wanted it to be compatible with the residences and existing retail stores that were across Sycamore Street. We did not want a big building next to uh, those smaller two-story, one-story and two-story buildings across the street. The standards also ensure buildings are comfortable and habitable for tenants and it includes standards to ensure buildings do not hurt the natural environment. So I, I, I like to use this example because it has a, a few things that we could talk about. One is a residential amenity area. Now the promenade was not required to put in these balconies, but they did. Um, and it's something that we might like to talk about when we uh, delve into the development standards in the OLI and LI district. Maybe we could talk about different uh, amenity areas that a developer can provide and maybe they could get additional credit for density or impervious area if we feel uh, uh, an amenity area would be a better value to the township or to surrounding um, districts or neighborhoods. In this building, um, we also um, 
This was a part of a mixed use development. So it required uh, retail stores at the bottom and the residential to be on the upper two floors, um, which was part of the mixed use requirement. We also had a requirement for modulation or a building offset, which is hard to see along here, but rather than um, it, it breaks up the width of the building's long facade. So you don't have one bulky building or one massive building having that offset where this, this building that's in brick is at one setback. And then the one that has the siding on it is set back even further, two feet or four feet. Another development standards is the amount of impervious area or green space that a development has. Um, another thing that we can uh, regulate, and you see this a lot in New York City, is that uh, the higher floors you go, the more set back the building becomes, and that's to allow more light and more air down to the lower floors. All right, so I have this three minute video that kind of goes through everything I just talked about. And it, it uh, I think it's a, a good um, synopsis of what I just said. So let's give me three minutes to hear this guy from City Beautiful talk about zoning in his words. To a little known and sometimes arcane set of rules and regulations known as the zoning code. Zoning influences everything from building height to signage. Understanding the zoning code is key to understanding U.S. cities and how to influence them for the better. In this video, I'm gonna go over the basics of zoning. I'm gonna describe the pros and cons of zoning. And finally, I'm gonna tell you how you can influence the zoning code in your community to make it more walkable, bikeable, and equitable. So let's start with zoning basics. The zoning code consists of two basic parts, the map and the regulations. Let's start with the map. If you've ever played a SimCity game, you have an idea of how a zoning map works. Every parcel in a city is placed in a zoning district that specifies the types of uses allowed. Now, every city can create their own zoning districts, but they all generally have the same basic types of districts. They are residential, from single family homes to high rise apartments in yellow, commercial, including retail, restaurants and hotels, colored red, industrial in gray, so some maps will show them in purple, Institutional, which means schools and public buildings, typically in blue, and open space in green appropriately. Here's an example of a zoning map. You can see that most of the city is residential in yellow. There's a large industrial section in the northeast and a few areas of commercial in red. Now zoning maps can get a lot more complicated than just five colors. Now in this example map here, you can see all of the colors just mentioned with the addition of an orangish color for multifamily residential. It's common for zoning districts to separate not only uses, but intensity of uses. You'll often see C1, C2, and C3 zones, where the increasing number means it allows increasing levels of commercial density. In addition, you may also see overlay zones. These zones, as the name implies, lays over the top of other zones and adds additional restrictions and regulations within them. Okay, so that's the map. It assigns every parcel to a district that has its own set of rules regarding use and intensity. Next up are the regulations themselves. Now, this is where zoning gets its reputation for being so boring. There's no video game that simulates the writing of a zoning code, but it's where all of the important stuff is located. So let's dive in and make some sense out of it. The zoning code or ordinance contains sections for each of the zones found in the map. Within these sections, there's typically a use table. This table lists all of the permitted uses within each zone. For example, a use table for a commercial zone may have a bakery as an allowed use, but an auto salvage yard is a not an allowed use. Many use tables also classify some uses as conditional uses or special uses. These uses aren't allowed outright, but require some consultation and approval from the city government first. It's more of a case-by-case -case basis situation. After the use table comes the basic development requirements. This means standards for things like building setbacks and side yards, minimum lot sizes, and building heights. Every city has different requirements for their zoning districts. After the use tables and development requirements for each zoning district, most zoning codes will contain impact regulations or regulations that are not specific to any one zoning district. These often include regulations for signage, parking standards, historic preservation standards, and urban design criteria. So that's a really quick overview of the zoning code. At this point, you may be thinking to yourself, that all sounds really reasonable. And you know what? You're right. It is reasonable. And that's one of the benefits of zoning. Zoning tries its best to ensure that new development is built in a way that's predictable, reasonable, and minimizes impact to adjacent property owners. It's why city leaders installed zoning codes in many cities over 100 years ago. 
zoning ensures that an oil or refinery can't be built adjacent to a neighborhood of single family homes. I think we can all agree that's a pretty worthwhile. Uh, all right, sorry to, pay, sorry to cut you off there, buddy. So let's um, start talking about the LI and OLI districts. So um, for that, I thought we would go to a great tool that the Bucks County Planning Commission has developed. And it's something that you probably will, you guys will all probably like to get to. And that's the Bucks County Maps and Data Portal. So in, in Google, I just put Bucks County GIS map and it, it comes up as the first, the first item. So if you click on that first item, you get to the Bucks County. I think she froze. Hmm. <laughs> oh, that's a bummer. I will say, I feel like that zoning video was made specifically for me with the Sim City reference and the Zelda reference. Like that was aimed at at my age group in a big way. <laughs> hey, I just want to say while we're waiting, I took a nine-hour course up at the college up in Doylestown on trying to learn about zoning, and I learned more from Michelle in the last ten minutes. Oh, thank you. So that was, a, that was an awesome presentation. <laughs> okay. Well, we're not done yet. So hopefully you st still feel that way at the end, Joel, but thank you. All right. So you get to the floodplain viewer and then you get the map of Bucks County and every municipality is shown in here. So I'm just going to drag Newtown up to the center, blow it up get to the area that we want to talk about, which is the Newtown Industrial Commons. Uh, we're going to put the municipal zoning layer on, which is these layers over here on the side. You just click on municipal zoning and right there, the LI district pops up and the OLI district pops up. So you can see exactly where they are. If you wanted to go down and look at the buildings, what buildings are there, you just click on there and voila. It, they show up. The parcels are already here. Each property is already on there. We could also go down to uh, the imagery, which is the aerial view. There we go. So you just click on that layer with land use and you can see all the residential districts. Those are the areas in uh, yellow. Uh, open space areas are in green. And then in our districts, the light purple are vacant properties, which isn't really very true about this parcel, but it's vacant, vacant properties. The purple, is classified as manufacturing. The red is commercial where we see the offices located in the two districts and the blue is government or institutional, which we might expect with the post office as it's located in the commons. So let me get out of here, go back. I might have to start again, so. Okay, good. Okay. So what I did next is listed all of the existing uses in the OLI and LI zoning districts. So you have all of the P stands for permitted, CU stands for conditional use and SE over here stands for a special exception. So these are all of the uses allowed in the OLI and the LI. And just to fit it on one page, I put half on this side. So then I did a, a sort and I put in, uh, did it by classifications. The A, uh, 
classifications. You'll see different classifications here and here. The A classifications mean that it's agricultural uses. The B, and notice there are no B uses allowed in the LI or OLI, and we're probably gonna to wanna to talk about that later, but B uses are your residential uses. C is religious, educational, recreational, and institutional uses. D is office uses. E is retail and consumer services. F is common carriers, public utilities, and public services. G is industrial uses. H are accessory uses. And I are wireless telecommunication facilities. So when we're talking about the OLI and LI districts, we probably aren't gonna talk about any A uses. So if we take them <coughs> out of the picture, oh, and let, let, me, let me point out this. So you might say forestry. Why is forestry a use in um, the OLI and LI district? Well, as we all know, Pennsylvania has a whole lot of trees within the state. So the state constitution says that the, you have to allow forestry activities in every part of your municipality. So that back when Newtown Township was creating the zoning district, the best place they thought to put any forestry activities was in the OLI and LI districts. So that's why the forestry is there. So if we take out the A, all the A uses, and then we take out the H uses, which again are accessory uses. It's not the primary use, which we're gonna talk about in the two zoning districts, it's the accessory use. And we're only here, I believe, to talk about primary uses. So if we take them out and we take out the communications and, and antennae uses, we then have these uses. Michelle, one second. Yeah. Uh, with regard to the accessory solar, does that mean solar panels on a roof? What's accessory solar energy equipment? And let's go back. Accessory solar equipment. So when you have questions like that, you, you could look up in your zoning ordinance. I don't know if you guys asked for a paper copy. I, I like paper copy. I did, but I mean, I didn't get one. I think they okay. don't have the money to print them. We'll see if we could get you one. Um, so in the zoning district, you look up, I, I know because I've been doing this for a while, you go, look up section 803 in your zoning ordinance. 803.H.19, and that will give you the definition of that specific use. Okay. And if you look up H19, it says solar energy equipment is defined as any device structure or electrical system that converts solar energy into electrical energy, heats water, or produces hot air or similar function through the use of solar panels. So why is that being discluded? Because what if people want to put that, put the oh. solar panels in their, on their roof? So these uses that I'm taking out, I'm only taking out for our discussion of new uses oh, that okay. we might want to put in the OLI and LI district. I'm not talking about any, taking anything. Oh, okay, so you mean we can't build a solar field there? Right. Right. But if you want to, if the Planning Commission wants to allow that use, we could certainly talk about it. I would like yeah. to. It might be helpful to explain what an accessory use is. Okay. How it differs from a use. Well, I mean, by definition, accessory and primary, I can figure it out, but you can go ahead. Okay. So, so just like Amber said, we have primary uses such as, uh, let's look at one of them, uh, temporary storage. So I'm sorry, a primary uh, use might be a, a office building. And in that's your primary use. And in that office building, they might wanna have temporary storage, which is an H7 use. It's not the primary use of that property, which is the office building. It's something that is accessory to that primary use. Okay. 
All right, so if we take those uses out, just for our discussion again on new uses in the LI and OLI district, we get these uses. Place of worship, school, commercial school, eating place, which is uh, E5 use, but according to the definition in the OLI and LI district, it has to cater to employees of those two zoning districts. It's not the typical E5, E6 use that we've been seeing for conditional uses in the Bricksmore development because of that uh -huh. one caveat. Actually. So these are our existing uses. Sorry, let me get back here. These are the existing oh. uses that are allowed in these two districts. Again, either by permitted use, conditional use, or special exception. So to end tonight, and that's this last slide, I thought we would at least start the discussion on proposed uses that you all as the planning commission would like to see in the LI and OLI district. That's why it's a kind of a blank slate. And then we could talk about it for a little while tonight, as long as you want. And then I could do some research on it. We could talk about development standards at our next meeting. Medical marijuana. It's there already. <laughs> yeah, it, 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 it is there already. Right, but I want to make sure it's it stays there. Oh, okay. We're again. I don't want to talk about removing any uses. If you okay. don't want to I talk know. about, I know you're getting a list of, you know, ones that we wanted to explore. Okay, I'm going to leave these up for you okay. to look at, because these are again uses that are allowed. So, what uses do you all want to see in the LI and OLI? Michelle, what's a planing mill? <laughs> I think she froze again. Oh, okay. It's it's like a lumber mill. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. It's you know, for uh, okay. A little bit of introduction. Uh, the board of supervisors and the economic development committee still here. have been concerned about trying to find additional uh, opportunities to bring um, high wage earners into Newtown Township. And the benefit of that would be one, these people will have discretionary funds to buy a home in the area, uh, support the local businesses. And I have no clue as to what those most desirable high income earning opportunities are um, you no and we have no available housing they go for like a hundred grand over appraisal so that's not an issue <laughs> yeah. well no. then should we look at should we look at uh oh, well you said high range earners i don't know if you're talking about businesses alan but should we look at apartment uses high density residential uses mm -hmm. such as apartments mm -hmm. I don't like that. Um, you know, I, I would be thinking about some of the new uh, uses that rely on technology. I mean, uh, the fact that in, today there, there's so much dependence on the cloud and processing of data and, uh, you know, the farms that are mining and utilizing and storing this data require an awful lot of energy um, and may need square footage. Um, you know, you look at, you know, Bitcoin and some of the new technologies, uh, cryptocurrencies and all of the technology that's associated with those types of uses. I don't know if the factory space and the warehouse space is amenable to uh, readaptive use that would bring technologies into the community. Uh, the other thing that I thought about is the fact that um, many distribution hubs for um, online shopping, you know, this is the wave of the future according to a lot of people. But I, I look at the dissemination of goods and services, um, we're in an area served 
by major network of highways. We're not off of 95 that far, but uh, we do have a warehouse use that's permitted, but distribution center, we don't need tractor trailers, but you know, individual sized parcel vans are delivering Amazon all over creation today. And, you know, does this generate a lot of income for employees? I, I don't know, but it's a full part no. of, you know, the economy in the 21st century. So, you know, this is not an easy task to come up with some ideas. Um, the other aspect is what services could fit in the business commons that would draw people to want to be employed there. Um, you know, we've, we've kicked around some ideas that, you know, employees don't have a large lunch break opportunity to go into a restaurant in the borough or in the PC district. What do the choices do they have? Uh, Joey G's and, and Francisco's, that's it for, you know, new town business commons right now. Joey G's is closed so, now. I was just gonna say Joey G's is closed. It's only Francisco's now. Alan, do you remember years ago when uh, at the Coldwell Banker building at the Lindenhurst and the bypass when they wanted to put a restaurant on the bottom floor? Yep. Yeah, yeah. And was that was that. denied. Yep. Yep. Like a cafeteria it, type of uh, a restaurant, I believe it was. Yep. What so, I can, Alan, you can vouch for me on this. I can remember lots of heated discussion anytime anyone discussed any kind of food service in the yeah, commons. Absolutely. Why? Every person that came with an idea was kind of uh -huh. put through it. Why though? I love the I, I love the idea of more restaurants. Yeah. Absolutely. I mean the, the amount of people that work in the commons it, it's it's a lot. And they have what are they have Marcellas there? And uh, and that's it. So, you know, but, but we allowed a catering facility, which doesn't, you know, feed the, feed the employees that are there. But um, yeah, I think expanding restaurant use in there is. Well, would that mean adding a different use or just take erasing the paragraph that says catering to the, and like you're saying, it does cater just by being there, you're catering to the industrial community. Right. Why couldn't it just cater to the entire township? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That for the most part, their business, if if we erased that caveat, yeah, the lunch crowd would be the people that work there. But mm -hmm. then in the evening, people might go down there anyway. Maybe eating place should be permitted instead of conditional use. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Catering means something technical. It doesn't mean catering to everybody. It means a big hall with uh, no. I didn't people. mean. I mean servicing the business community by being mm -hmm. there for them exclusively has always seemed to be the argument. I okay. can recall many discussions at the supervisor level where well then you're going to have to close by seven p.m. Yeah, it was ridiculous. Mm -hmm. That kind of discussion. So that was years ago. Just, different board. Remember that eating place, the E5 use is uh, usually considered uh, a restaurant where you eat in. Maybe the planning commission wants to recommend that we allow the E6 use, which is uh, titled eating place drive in, but it's uh, defined as a restaurant where you, where they make the food and you could bring it out All right. at the same time yeah. too. Let's add that. That sounds like a good idea. Mm -hmm. also, also eat in. Yeah. Right. So, yeah. Where, where does you know, something like a Panera Bread? Yes. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. something like that, where you know you can sit there and eat, or you can take it with you. Yeah. Does the somebody we had a question, but before we get yeah. off of this, does the Planning Commission want to look at a allowing drive-throughs? Maybe. I would Depends think on how it would affect the traffic in the area. Yeah, by conditional use for, for driveways. Yeah. Drive but there are locations where you can easily circle the building and get back out right. onto the street without causing any kind of backup. I guess we could just put a little except shift fillet. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Talk <laughs> about backups. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. I'm joking. Yeah. I don't really mean that. I'm not excited about drive-throughs i'm more excited about like having some real 
decent restaurants. So, do, you, do you not want to drive through, Joel, or you're just not excited about it? Um, Why are you not excited about it? Uh, I don't know. Does the township need need drive throughs? We you we know. have several already. Well, I guess it depends. Do you want uh, Starbucks? Do you want fast food? Do you want like a McDonald's or Chick Fil A in that area? Michelle, I, one of the concerns that I have is if we are considering adaptive reuse of existing buildings and their multi-tenant uh, mm -hmm. users in that building, uh, putting a drive-through in, in conjunction with the other three uses may put an onerous burden on mm -hmm. those other tenants that have the parking field and the drive-through traffic impacting their ability to, um, you know, conduct business. It, it's one thing if it, it's a dine-in carry-out where people park and enter uh, to pick up or curbside pickup. But when you introduce, I think, a traffic circulation pattern with drive-through, um, that's going to take an awful lot of uh, uh, manipulation to make sure that it works for the Right. community, let alone the property owner uh, and the other tenants. But, um, you know, it, it's something to consider. But my opinion is that, you know, I would prefer to see carry out or dine in. Uh, being I agree. Me too. Yeah. Okay. okay. Michelle, the question that I had a minute ago had to do with the restaurant usages. Do we, do we separate out fast casual as a usage from the other types or it's just all E5? I can't remember. I'm sorry. There's an E5 use and the E6 use. E, right. E5 use is typically where you're dine-in restaurant mm -hmm. and an E6 use would be takeout, like um, like the uh, hoagie place, like a hoagie place that's over by the farmer's market. I can't think of Primo Hoagies, something like that. Okay. Does that answer so your question? Well, you can kind of, eat. I mean, fast casual is the new is that new style, like Panera, or uh, there are taco places that are that way, where they're not really designed to be eaten in, though there is space to eat in. Okay. It sounds like it is more of an E six. Yes, yes. Like people don't generally go to a Chipotle to eat in, though there is space to do so if someone Correct. wanted to. Okay, got it. Right. Thank you. Because it seems like that's the sort of business model that would be perfect for the commons where- Yeah, like five guys. I mean, there's any number of good fast casual places. Uh, yeah. They also are the one restaurant model that, well, at least prior to COVID, were on the, were on the rise and doing well. I, um, I would think they do well in a business community. Absolutely. Yeah. Where you can, if you sit there and eat, you're still not there for two hours. Yeah. there for 15, 20 minutes. Right. And I think the distinction actually, now that I'm thinking about it with fast casual is there isn't really wait staff. No, but we There's don't just separate out team. what's on the menu with eating place. Right. And you're mm -hmm. not prohibited from taking out from someplace with a tablecloth either. That's correct. Right. Oh, yeah, everybody's doing takeout now. You know, the, the only difference with a, a restaurant like that being in the LI or the OLI is um, they want to be catering not only to the nine to five crowd, but to everyone. And would they want to go into the commons thinking that most of their business will be Monday to Friday, nine to five? I mean, I don't know what their business plans are, that um, what they require. But I mean, I would drive over to there if there was a place I liked over there. Absolutely. Yeah, oh, yeah. Car. That's the way Newtown is, though. You have to drive right. for right. picking up your food or eating out anyway. Yeah, right. maybe you really can add an E6 in there as conditional use also. Yeah, that Makes sounds reasonable. There's a real yes. void of restaurants in that area. I mean, oh, people, yeah. Francesco's got a gold mine because there's no competition. Exactly. That's why I go. That's the only place I really go. <laughs> I'm 
I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> well, well what about, it, deliver, it delivered me for free. So. Oh, excuse me. I have a question. Even though I'm not a, a member of the committee, am I allowed to contribute any suggestions? No, Matt, you're not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. You know you are. Matt, as uh, you know, as chair, I can recognize a, a question from you. Okay, uh, a few that I was going to think of, and, and I had a question about, would be like in indoor agriculture facilities are are becoming more common, and they're a style of farming that doesn't require pesticides and can also allow most crops to be grown year round under more controlled conditions. Um, another one being co working spaces. Uh, we've had a few discussions about those on economic development committee meetings as well. Um, those those were the main two that I was going to suggest, and then just sound off, you know, a, a, a thumbs up on the uh, on the fast casual uh, restaurants because that's also something that's come up in conversation during our meetings as well. Well, I I was going to ask Michelle, you can confirm this, but I thought the shared office spaces were permitted under Office D one. Yes, that's what I was going to say. We do have a I know of one place that is exactly that over on uh, campus drive the building they, they provide the secretary and receptionist and the copy machine and you rent a desk oh okay so i might require a broader definition under that section right but i know i remember from uh seeing them else uh come before the planning commission years ago that it does exist and my accountant is still in there, so. Oh, <laughs> yeah, my husband has worked at a space like that. They're they're great. Just make sure it's not WeWork since they had their oh, big culture. But it's, <laughs> it's that concept, so. Yes. And my other question with what Matt just said about growing, isn't that what, Alan, what you were talking about with medical marijuana, that they were gonna be growing it indoors? Uh, it, that is true. And one of the situations that, you have to be aware of is that indoor um, growing takes an awful lot of energy. Uh, now, Greenleaf out by 295 in Laura Makefield has, you know, grow lights in greenhouses, which, you know, initially was a concern of Laura Makefield that light pollution was going to be an issue. But if you have warehouse space that can be retrofitted for growing in indoor environment, either hydroponically with grow lights or with just grow lights and, uh, you know, soil is based uh, crops, you know, it's a potential you maybe don't want to discount from your permitted uses uh, subject to, you know, conditions that one is contained within a structure that does not emit, you know, fumes, gases, or light outside of the footprint of the building, uh, especially since you do have residential uses that surround uh, the business commons. So, you know, I, I don't think the township wants to be that um, focused that we're only dealing with retail uses or food uses. We're looking to try and create job opportunities and business opportunities for entrepreneurs and businesses I want to locate in Newtown Township. So uh, to me, uh, it, the, the bigger the palette we have to choose from, the better success hopefully we can have for the township. Hmm. I agree. So, so my next question about that then is, we don't really say what your farm has to look like and agriculture is permitted everywhere. So wouldn't that be permitted in an old warehouse without making a separate category? Well, if the agricultural use is included in the OLI and the LI district at yeah, that's what I'm saying. Uh, the conditions would be that it has to be contained within a permanent structure um, that does not emanate, uh, you know, foul odors, light pollution, or noise that's uh, inconsistent with the, the 
quality of life of uh, the other businesses and residents in the area. Mary, are you talking about the A1 use? Yeah, it's already okay. permitted. Well, an A1 use is defined as uh, a use shall, shall include uses such as tilling of soil, raising of livestock, horses or poultry, <laughs> growing trees, shrubs, flowers, vegetables, and related farmhouses and usual farm buildings. Mm. So as long as that fit into that definition. I'm then... just wondering, does it fit into warehousing? I think animal husbandry is a yeah. lot different than agriculture. No, I don't mean we should be having cows in the buildings. I mean, what Matt said about modern farming. And I was going to ask Matt that uh, if he could tell me more about a specific use that he was thinking of for the indoor agricultural facilities. Um, meaning, meaning a specific uh, business or just you know like a specific crop. Oh yeah, what, what, just either or both. Um, well, as, as far as the uh, the the indoor farming, the the main main thing for it is is it's more of like a, a green approach where it requires less water and less pesticides. So that was more of more of what I'd be focusing on. Not any specific like oh, it just has to be uh, you know cabbage for example, or it just has to be broccoli or or whatever it would be. Um, and I, I I I don't have a specific. Uh, business in mind particularly now. Okay, you just thought that would sound like a good use in that area and it very well may be. Okay, okay. I think maybe I'll just keep this slide up so we could see some of those uses that I took off since we're starting to talk about them. Oh, um, hey Matt, you can have people grow out like rent plots inside and have their own indoor garden. De well, depending on, on how it would be done, that, that could be an option. Um, I don't know if the if all the technology is that accessible for someone just to go in and do that. Since some of the uh, some of the articles I've been reading about indoor farming seem to be they they look very futuristic and they're they're vertical like stacked on on like you know normal warehouse shelves, but instead they're they're grow beds for stuff like kale and stuff like that, and it requires less water than normal farming as well. So it's just more sustainable approach towards agriculture to begin with and it's also something where like alan was saying you could just gut buildings that are sitting there and then just fix them to look the right way and and you know then you're not you don't have as you don't have to have as much acreage to produce the same amount of crops it's maybe the definition of maybe the definition of agriculture could be expanded upon yeah, and it sounds a little bit like what Alan had described as the medical marijuana grower. Mm -hmm. So if you can grow marijuana inside, you could also grow kale. Yep. yep. All right, cool. I, I had a, a thought. Um, what about service businesses? Uh, to business thank you, Mary. You took the words out of my mouth. Yes. Things like dry cleaners and... Um, Barbershops, uh, beauty parlors. Do they say beauty parlor anymore? No. <laughs> but uh, I know that there are some places on Friends Lane that do things like uh, therapeutic massage, but. Well, the NAC has all that. Yeah. So, but they're accessory yeah. uses. No one wants to go to the NAC anyway. Well, we don't know <laughs> that, but they, those services are under their umbrella of health club, but standalone services like that. So what do you all feel about what Mary's saying? Do you want to see dry cleaners, salons, um, those barbershops in? Sure, I, I think that would be an asset to the, uh, to the uh, businesses that are in there already. Sure, yeah. why not? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Alan talked earlier about um, finding uses um, that can that would allow employees of those districts want to work there. And I think having a place where you could go drop off your dry cleaning and go get a haircut probably would enhance those districts. So I yeah. think they are good uses for those districts. 
All right, so we'll look into those. What about um, an E9 use, an entertainment use? Has anybody thought of that? Yeah. And what do you think of that? I think it'd be a great overlay district. <laughs> Have something like a multiplex theaters, um, other kinds of uh, places where people, can, where families can go in the evening or on weekends to entertain themselves in association with the restaurants it makes sense mm -hmm. hey, isn't that we have the golf, we have the golf place in there too already yeah well that's right yeah i don't know what use that was when they came in well that's not important we, 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 I mean, we can figure so that there out there are things that are already yeah. permitted <laughs> Right. We're, we're trying to make so, a list of, uh, of, of uses that we want. If they're already there, that's fine. But let's yeah. let's make a let make the list first. Okay. So we'll look at entertainment uses, which right now includes facilities such as a bowling alley, skating rink, pool hall, movie theater, theater, video gaming, pinball arcade, or other similar use provided. Sounds good. This sounds like it was written for the Music Man. <laughs> Maybe we should expand to more popular uses. Yes, and that's um, what I want to hear from you. Escape ropes, axe throwing. As, as one of the things I know Michelle has talked about is that putting some of these types of uses into the business park area would be a benefit. And we, we've also mentioned something about, you know, a residential component. But I'm thinking that some of these uses like entertainment venues and the uh, convenience for the employees could fit in an overlay district where the township could identify a area within the business commons that's more insulated uh, from the residential neighbors that surround several perimeters of the park. Because one of the things that you run the risk of is putting an oxus use being proposed up against the residential neighborhood. So if, if we do look at some of these things in an area that is more centralized in the business commons, um, maybe some of that opposition wouldn't be as uh, vocal and, and carry the, the baggage that a lot of the supervisors would find uncomfortable to address. We're, we're challenged with trying to develop a model that allows more economic you know, revenue to be generated as a result of what we're supposedly looking at. So, you know, to me, I know Michelle's talked about an overlay district, but you know, just plopping certain uses down in certain areas um, might not be a bad place to start. Yeah. That, that's a, a, a very good comment, Alan. And, and we had talked about that briefly, that boy, when we talk about these uses, this might be a, a great place to put an overlay district. Um, when I looked at the OLI and LI districts though, these two districts are only in Newtown Township. They, uh, you don't find the OLI or LI districts anywhere else but in Newtown Township and nowhere else except this specific area. So at first I was thinking, well, an overlay might not fit because there's no need to put an overlay because this is the only place. However, for the reason that you just said, Alan, you probably don't want to put an entertainment use, something that's going to have a lot of noise, like we talked about, maybe up here in the OLI district, because of the large amount of residences you have neighboring it. It might be better to put more in the central area or the area by the bypass. Correct. Well, I've been noticing that the uh, Newtown Brewery, I, I was talking to the owner. We've invited him to be on the board of the Newtown Business Commons mm -hmm. Association. Mm -hmm. And he's doing kind of things to keep his business vital. 
and he brings in musical entertainment and food trucks and he hasn't separated that out from his brew pub. That's so, right in here, right? That's yeah, it's right yes. there. So th there seems like, it, and it's popular and people love it. So allowing mm -hmm. for entertainment is set, it, with eating and drinking sounds like a great idea. And I haven't heard anyone complain either about uh, rafters having weddings at night. And that's on Friends Lane. So I think you're right, Alan, that if it's, if it's in there, but it's not right against your house, nobody notices. So what are we supposed to do about any of this as the planning commission? What is our... I guess I don't, I know we're talking about this and I guess we would make recommendations to whom or who to, to do all this stuff. Well, you know, basically I think I would challenge Michelle to be the lead person to kind of take the thoughts that we've discussed this evening and, you know, encapsulate most of the highlights and, and still focus on the economic engine that we want to try and create. I, I spoke to a couple of people about looking at different components of this whole project. Um, the revitalization as an economic engine um, is one aspect. Uh, the new uses that may not necessarily be high end employment opportunities, but are essential to the dynamics of the business commons is an element of, um, I think our charge. And, you know, and, and thirdly, you know, is there something we're not considering like the residential component um, mm -hmm. and then with that comes the pedestrian uh, accoutrements that we would like to see that don't exist out there today, but they don't come with generating economic revenue directly to the township. And I understand that the charge from the board had been, you know, to take a look at what we thought might generate additional employment opportunities with high wage earners coming to Newtown Township. And, you know, that's not an easy task, but, you know, I think we're, we're getting started, but I, I don't know how soon we're going to come up with any earth shattering recommendations for the board. Um, but I think keeping them apprised of where our discussions have gone um, is a good thing if they want to follow up on our minutes. I would view it a little bit differently in that I think it's more important, if at least as important, if not more important, to take that area and do something that is of service to the residents of Newtown Township as much as you know generating money from high earners. Well, it seems like it's zoned for high earner potential. I don't know if there's really much we can add to uh, increase the type of people that would work there. Well, well, you we would have, have to have more doctors and lawyers, I guess, you know, more yeah, office. I mean, if you have people coming there from Newtown after hours, throwing money at the places, right. it's going to more than make up for people working there nine to five that earn some major cash. I don't see, we have high earners in Newtown that could go there and pat patronize. And then you have the high earners that work there staying late. <laughs> Exactly. Right. Yeah. I, I, see adding, I see adding the uses we talked about. I think that's a wonderful idea. I don't think retail really works well there, but I think some of these service type things, whether it be food or things like that, would be a good benefit. You know, I think losing Lockheed Morton was such a big hit and it would be hard to find any kind of replacement for that type of business to come into the commons. 
and and KVK, it's a shame they were, you know, I thought they were doing a good job there and they kind of, you know, with all the opioid crisis and uh, I, I think they got the short end of the stick. Well, at the work session, the supervisors were very clear that they did not want to consider any kind of changes in the OR districts, just concentrate completely here. And we don't really have big acreage here. Right. So um, before we leave tonight, um, I just wanted to point out an another good tool is that you could click on a parcel and it give you the acreage. So um, like this, this property is 10.75 acres. This parcel is only 2.2 acres. So be, like I said, before we leave, I wanna have just a, a spend another minute or two on residential uses. I don't think the LI or OLI is a good uh, place for single family residential, just because the area isn't there. Um, uh, on this 2.29 acres, you're not gonna, you're gonna get maybe one, maybe two single family detached uh, buildings. But what do you all think about apartments. If you had a higher density residential use, a couple of stories with uh, a bunch of apartments, we all know that Newtown Township does not suffer from um, people wanting to buy houses. Uh, the sales market is going very quick, especially in this market. But what it might lack of is um, more affordable places for, for people to live. Should we look into a higher density residential use in this district, in these two districts? I think we should at least look into it. Would that be a primary use of the property? Would that be kind of an auxiliary or secondary use in conjunction with something else? No, I think that would have to be a primary use. Yeah. Uh, if we were to do that, then we'd also have to step up our um, code enforcement and all that stuff that we don't currently do with rental properties now. Yeah. And I wouldn't even approve that use unless that was a stipulation because I'm already seeing some property owners here that rent properties that take advantage of their tenants. Yeah. Right. But I'm thinking of an apartment complex more than individual owners. We only have one apartment complex in Newtown right now. You're talking about the promenade? Newtown Place. Promenade. Oh, yeah. Kind of a smaller know. scale. I always forget about them. Yeah, it's a homeowner's it's a, nightmare. It's a homeowner's nightmare to live next to them? No, it, well, it's, it's much better now that BET got there. Quaker was not very good about spending money to fix anything. Yeah. So it's, it has obviously improved in the last five years. T tell me specifically what the property maintenance, they'd allow the grass to grow too high or what? Well, they would, we would struggle to get any common property things through because they have three votes and the homeowners only had two so they pretty much get to do whatever they wanted or not wanted to do oh. but they said it's gotten much better bet but it's still an interesting scenario that they are in control of the homeowners association 100 percent but in that development you have a mixture of houses here we're talking about just high density housing is right. that correct, Michelle? Yeah, that's what I was wanted us to talk about. Yes. I, what about I think there's a void of apartments in Newtown, even yeah. though my guess is they would probably be very high end, like everything else in Newtown is. Uh -huh. yeah. And I, I guess I, I spoke with a, a person that's a real estate developer, and they said that any adaptive reuse of a property in the business commons would require so much infrastructure expense that you know the number of apartments would probably have a price tag that would be on the upper end of mm -hmm. what we traditionally expect you know apartments to rent for yeah, you know we, we heard that at the uh, economic development too because it's not a place like you see in cities where they take a historic building or an old factory so it has some kind of high ceiling industrial charm and make it into lofts. We don't have those kind of buildings. So you're, just, you're basically doing a teardown with yeah. the old 
the structure improvement and land development costs, the end result would be maybe those apartments would rent uh, on the high end of what, you know, Newtown Township is usually residents are used to paying for an apartment use. But well, they, I'm sure we'd find, we'd have no problem finding people to pay it. Yeah, I think you would. Yeah. One thing, if I may say something, one thing that one, one segment of the population that we don't really cater to at all are the young professionals. We have, uh, you know, cradle to grave in certain ways, but people who are, you know, out of college, out of graduate school, first job, second job, either married, living together, or about to be married, without children, you don't really have a place to go in Newtown. Uh, 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 high-end apartments, not uh, moderate to high-end apartments uh, that offer, you know, am amenities that, 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 are there, that people generally want, swimming pools, decks, patios, whatever. Gathering uh, places. Exactly. might be something that uh, would be attractive to that part of the population. And I certainly, I'm not, I'm not the developer, so I'm not going to do the marketing and tell them what, what, what the prices should be. They can figure that out. And I'm assuming they wouldn't be interested if they couldn't make a profit. <laughs> so I wouldn't want to see it everywhere, but I could see that in spots, particularly in this se section, one or two of those buildings might be beneficial because you want to have more people down there to use these other, other businesses evenings and weekends. Right. And the other thing would be walking distance. So that's my cont contribution to the conversation. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. <laughs> sure. um, okay, so I'm hearing a maybe on higher density residential. Yeah. yeah. So, and th this is what I wanted to hear tonight. I wanted to hear the types of uses that you all wanted to at least start thinking about. And maybe the next time, if you give me a little time, the next time we meet and can discuss this, we'll talk about what those uses would mean in these uh, specific districts. And maybe we could talk about the different development standards, how high the buildings should be, what should the setbacks be, how much parking should we make allowances if they give us uh, more amenities, things like that. Does that sound like a plan, Alan? Sounds, sounds good to me, Michelle. Okay. I think we've made a lot of, a lot of inroads this evening in terms of getting a basic understanding of what we need to look at. And yeah. uh, thank you for your expertise. And the other quick question, and I, again, I don't know if the Board of Supervisors is considering this, but you know, bringing in somebody that's seen this adaptive reuse of work in other uh, municipalities that maybe Bucks County Planning Commission can share with Newtown Township as to here are some, some successes, here are some things that didn't work so well, so we don't stumble through this and then find out that, you know, some of these things have been tried and didn't work. And yeah, that's a great idea. That's so. a great idea. We could we could do that. We know um, there are some places in Bucks County and neighboring Montgomery County that have gone through exactly uh, something like this and have done studies. Maybe the planning commission. Maybe we could look into how much those types of studies would cost. And if that would be, I think we can get a consultation. They'd be happy to come to a meeting and see what we're talking about uh, before we have to pay any money for it. But the, look how involved the, the county planning commission is with the jointure and the new comprehensive plan. It's basically the same work, but then on a different yep. scale. Yep. Yep. Okay. That sounds good, Michelle. Okay. All right. Any other questions or comments for Michelle? No. Oh, oh, great uh, job. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. As superb as always. Yes. Thank you, Michelle. What, do, does this happen again? Are we, uh, we going to have another session like this at some point? I would like to put this on the agenda at subject to Michelle's availability. Good. Uh, oh, if, if we can do the first meeting of the month, uh, with some time slots uh, subject to the other stuff on our agenda um, to let her, you know, come back to us. If, 
if next month is too soon, um, you know, maybe we do it in, you know, July, but, you know, the clock is ticking, uh, I think. So, I, you know, it's Michelle, it'd be in your court. Okay, let me, I, I'd like to let you know if I could. Yes, certainly. No, I'm not going to put you on the spot tonight. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, Michelle. Okay. All righty. Um, moving on.